The Sarasota Herald Tribune published an investigation about racial bias in the Florida court system, claiming trial judges sentenced blacks to harsher punishments than whites. Now the judges are upset about the report and firing back with help from a new college of Florida statistics and a legal expert, Anne-Marie Rizzo from the Florida Law Place, is here to help us get a better understanding of what's happening. All right, so Anne-Marie, um, the claims are that the, there was an error in the research, and through that, it's becoming a big mess. A lot of people on both sides are upset saying that the statistics aren't right. I think one thing we need to note is that it's the system overall. What I think the problem is and where the uh, debate and arguments are coming is that it was addressed in attacking the judges, that they were the ones for this problem. And what we have to do is looking at these statistics, in my legal opinion, is look to everything that was involved. Because there could be a variety of factors that cause for a discrepancy in somebody's sentence. All right, let's back up. Let's explain what the issue is in the discrepancy. Okay, so the argument right now, what the Tribune was pre presenting, is that two people of two different races could have the exact same charge in the same criminal history and be sentenced completely different. So they're claiming racial bias. Correct. That's the reason. What they're failing to acknowledge is that, first of all, majority of cases are a negotiated plea between a state prosecutor and a defense attorney or a defendant on their own. And the judge is only there to make sure that it's a permissible legal sentence, not to interject what their personal opinion is. They're supposed to remain unbiased and to agree to whatever both sides have agreed to. Now, if they feel that there was something illegal or improper about what that agreement is, they can certainly interject at that point. But I would say 95 to 98 percent of cases are resolved in our court system through these plea negotiations. Okay, what's an open plea then? So when we hear the term open plea, that's where the two sides are not in agreement, and then the defendants, through their attorney, will go to the judge and say, here are the facts, this is why we believe my sentence should be this, then the prosecutors argue why the sentence should be something else, and the judge makes that decision. There's no discussion of that in this Herald Tribune article. I think if they wanted to attack judges, or at least look at the statistics of judges, in those situations, you could. those are the judges making those decisions. Maybe we should assess just their open pleas mm. or what the sentencing would be after a jury trial when the judges have heard all the facts in the case and they're making sentencing decisions. Well, you know, in this situation, I know that, for instance, in the black community, this is a huge issue that people have been speaking about and trying to c overcome and bring to light for a very long time. So now it almost seems like each party is passing the buck. At the end of the day, there are minorities that are getting being sentenced uh, at a harsher level. So then how do you balance that to say, okay, if it's the judge or it's the prosecutor or if it's whomever? I can't say that it's one person. Uh -huh. I mean, it truly is. It does appear like everybody's pointing fingers at each other because everyone plays a role in our system. Uh -huh. It's not going to be just one person involved in this. And I don't think it's truly necessarily a racist um, perspective from a prosecutor or a judge or anybody else, but it is just a flaw in the system across the board. I mean, it starts from, you may have somebody charged with a drug crime, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say it's person A and person B, they're different races, and they were stopped and they, the drugs were found in their vehicle. They have no criminal history. However, one was stopped by a rookie cop who may not have had justification to stop that vehicle, where the other one was stopped by a more experienced officer who did have a legal basis to stop that vehicle. A defense attorney may bring that to the attention of the prosecutor, and a prosecutor will say, well, because of this potential legal issue where I could lose everything, mm. I could give them some kind of probationary sentence and still get something out of it versus the, the chance of losing the whole case and it getting dismissed. Where the other one, that legal issue isn't presented, so they're allowed to give a harsher sentence. So every case is different. Mm -hmm. You're kind of comparing apples and oranges, Yes, there's but yet on paper it becomes black and white and then not fair appearing. Right, and you got to see what kind of attorney did these people have? What's their socioeconomic status? You know, having an attorney is very important because that's how they're looking to make sure your rights are protected. Right. So that's where the big problem lies, I think, in all of this, too. What a so mess. Bigger issue. Ugh. All right, well, mm. if you have a legal problem and need help, you can contact Anne-Marie at thelawplace.com. And next, 
we're going to be lightening things up a little bit. <laughs> we need to bring it back up with McCarty's headliner. We'll be right back.